So guys, today's video we look at the changes that came in yesterday as of the most recent update. We're going to give my first opinion and uh, take a look at some of the actual content within the game. Um, of course, usually we do an update rundown uh, type thing, actually like within the Wargaming website, have a look at the news, give my opinion there, whereas this one is going to be focused on the actual game, we'll have a look, we'll check out the season pass actually within the game, obviously I haven't purchased it, this is my first time on the game itself since the update, and we'll have a look through. Of course, my most notable change within the current system, uh, from what I can see, is obviously the premium tanks are kind of more highlighted within the game from what I can see, of course T95 being a tech tree tank and the M56 being highlighted in this gold colour, uh, kind of looks, I don't know, I don't know whether I prefer this to what it was previously, but yeah, kind of looks interesting. Then of course when I saw that I, I decided to have a look at some of the filters which are something on the game of course now you have the commander filter so if you don't want to play in a game where you haven't got any commanders by accidentally clicking on the wrong kind of tab or wrong kind of um, tank then of course you've got the commander filter so you will not be able to actually see tanks you don't have a commander in so that is really really nice um, for me personally anyway. It will stop me from playing in some of the tanks whereby, you know, I'm trying to test them out for a video and I accidentally click on, on a tank that doesn't have a commander, which has happened multiple times, I can tell you. And yes, you can still have decent games without a commander, but you were at a significant disadvantage, uh, don't get me wrong. Right, so... Other than the commander kind of one, you now have a daily XP one, so if you're interested in grinding through those season levels and getting up to the highest season level possible, uh, then it's a great way of actually doing it because obviously you have the earn XP whereby you need to get 4000 XP gets you one point. Now, if you that counts the double XP on the first win of the day so if you manage to actually get the win on the first like tank basically you can then get double XP towards this earn XP op and when it was something like triple XP or f times five XP on one of the weekends in, in a previous season I managed to get to the rank 100 very very quickly because obviously I have a lot of tanks in the garage that I can just play um, of course some of you will have a lot less depending on how long uh, you've played the game and some of you will have a lot more I think I have something in the region of 132 vehicles within the garage of course yeah very very interesting um, in terms of that of course we'll move on to actually purchase the season pass because obviously that is one of the key things within the game, 2,000 gold, absolutely yes, thank you very much, um, we will get that one. Um, yeah, really, really happy with this season pass from what I could see. Of course, um, you get a lot of actual gold back. Some, one of you actually mentioned that you do get 2,100 gold back from this season, so you'll make an extra 100 gold if you get to rank 96, which is the last gold drop and of course along the way you'll get four key cards as well so you get two at rank 90 you'll get uh, one at rank 70 i think it is yep and then one at like rank 55 it usually is yeah there we go so yeah you can get probably another 1500 gold back plus the possibility of getting premium tanks um from those key cards so it is absolutely one of the key things I would recommend if you're going to play World of Tanks and spend a little bit of money on it, of course. I think if you want to actually purchase it, then it's not actually that much. It definitely gives you something extra to do as well, because obviously you have the season challenges. Yes, they're not the most difficult challenges within the world, but, you know, it gives you something extra to strive towards if you don't you know traditionally play heavy tanks for example you're not going to block to 22 and a half thousand damage very easily in something like a light tank so for me personally because i don't play a lot of heavy tanks or, or heavily armored tanks that means that um it makes it somewhat a lot more difficult for me to be able to complete that easily so then i kind of go right time to play a heavy tank don't usually do it and it just makes that kind of gameplay a little bit more interesting. Obviously, you don't have to do that challenge. It just gives you more progress towards rank 100, which is obviously what most people want to be doing. 
Now, that you know, with regards to the challenges, when you purchase the season pass, you actually get an extra four, I believe, um, per week. So you won't get this the last four on this list. You'll only be able to get the top the top three. So yeah, really, really happy with the season rewards. Of course, um, if you're a new player, I can't recommend getting the season pass enough. The just for the silver and the gold, and also some of the XP boosters and stuff like that, it is super worth it for me personally. Um, can't recommend it enough. Really, really good um, kind of value for money in terms of that. And of course, you can always purchase the next season pass once you've purchased the first one because you get your gold back uh, as long as you don't spend it, of course. But then that's up to you whether you want to spend more gold the next season. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that. Now, in terms of a couple of other things, we've obviously got the Italian um, heavy tank, the Bisonte, in the tech tree. So I forgot we can actually filter now, which is fantastic. So if we want to have a look at these uh, new premium tanks, here it is. Oh, I'm being a bot now. Uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, we can have a look at the statistics of the vehicle. Now, there was a bit of controversy surrounding the Bisonte. And uh, that's because of the bottom left-hand corner. So, Bisonte, what's special about it? Well, it has 360 alpha damage per shot, and it's an auto-reloading mechanic, whereby you can kind of reload and then dish out one shell, but then reload the am ammunition back into the tank of that just one shell instead of having to reload the entire clip. So it's not an auto-load, it's kind of like this... Um, you fire one and then it can reload and then it has this mechanic whereby you can actually reload multiple shells back in and then you can't it comes at the cost of like the time it takes to reload the tank if that makes sense so if you reload to your full capacity which is three rounds in your auto loader then you know you've got to then wait um a lot longer for the last shell within the magazine compared to, or f the first shell within the magazine compared to the second and then compared to the last so it kind of gives you this opportunity where you always want to have three in the magazine fire one then reload that one and then fire that one and then reload that one etc so very very similar to the italian auto reloading medium tanks that they have in the game the progetto really really good tank overall and one um, I think is very very interesting and definitely one I want to get if I can uh, get my hands on it when it first comes into the game. I've obviously I did make a prediction that it would come with the ultimate season pass, but of course they made that change and change it to this hiss tank that they've now got in the game, the Cobra Hiss or whatever it's called. Uh, not too interested in that tank. I think a lot of you have actually said that the light tanks within the game aren't too bad. Um, I think it will be an interesting kind of mix to see what your what your guys opinions are if you actually got it and next kind of big thing which i'm really really pleased about don't get me wrong is the ability to actually see what nations um, your commanders are at and also being able to actually sw like check out what commanders you've actually got within the game because obviously now you can filter your commanders so Yes, you can have a look at your 9 skill crews, you can have a look at your 8 skill crews, 7, all of the various different ones, um, down to, to 3 skills and stuff like that, um, whereby you know you can pick how many um, uh, skills you want to actually have, and then obviously you can filter by nation, which makes it super easy to actually find the commander that you want now. Previously it was super annoying, because obviously you had to pick all of the various different um, or just trawl through like this trying to just find the commander and then hoping that you you find which tank it is because it didn't even tell you um, the tank to begin with I don't think um, uh, but then they changed it uh, so yeah now a lot better of course it tells you the earn rate of the commander um, you've got all of the various different information on it. it tells you how much crew XP you've got to convert from there from the crew um, yeah, really, really happy that they've made this change and it should make transferring your crews a lot easier compared to previously. So yeah, really, really happy with that. Obviously, as me personally, I've got a ton of crew commanders or whatever that I haven't actually used because half of them are just the same person, but multiple of them, if that makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm not going to use any of these because 
I can just transfer my crews between uh, the tanks that I already own and I've got plenty of nine skill crews that I can do that with. Of course maybe I'll start a series where I uh, start off with a one skill crew and see if I can still have some great games but I guess that's up to you. Leave your comments in the comment section down below. Do you want to see something like that? Because of course I can do that if you want me to. Now. As far as some other things, I'm not entirely sure whether the, yep, it is on sale at the moment. So you can also see which tanks you own within the tech tree. So of course, if you're wanting to pick up some tanks that you've previously owned within the within the tech trees, then I guess you can do that. Um, but as you can see, like um, we've got a lot of tanks um, that are on 30% discount, 50% discount, depending on which... Um, uh, which tier they are of course that's because of the nation on track event for the US at which point you can actually make quite a lot of silver as well so if you actually have all of the um, kind of uh, the premium tanks for the for the US obviously pick your highest earning one uh, and then you can actually have a look and, and see um, how much silver you can actually earn per game because you can get a 25% bonus for destroying one American vehicle in a battle and if you destroy two or more vehicles uh, using an American vehicle then you can get an extra 25% silver as well so that's a total of one and a half times silver plus any silver boost that you might want to use great time to use silver and of course if you really want to make loads of silver then you can always hop over to the Cold War mode at which point you can earn a ton, and I mean a ton, of silver within the within the Cold War mode. Of course, you do have to play with True Vision, and I know a lot of you don't particularly like playing the Cold War game mode, um, at least from what I've seen. Of course, we have the various different tanks right here. Obviously, the two Season Pass tanks are these ones um, on screen, the Cobra Hiss. What are the statistics like? Well, you've got decent penetration, terrible damage don't get me wrong 240 alpha damage 2400 hit points which is ugh, I don't know about that one um when you compare it to the actual other tanks at the tier but they can go 75 kilometers an hour forward um, and certainly is uh, going to be an interesting tank for you to play of course you get nowhere near the penetration values or damage of any of the other tanks at the tier but i guess it's kind of the first of its class, obviously the first light tank within um, Cold War. And of course, if you want something like that, then maybe the ultimate season pass is for you. But it does cost you 14,000 uh, gold, which is, mm, in my opinion, a lot of money to be spending on one tank. Especially considering it's kind of the first of its line. Not particularly uh, a super overpowered one at that as well. So up to you what you want to do. Of course... If, if it was down to me, I would go with the M60A1 Pattern Rise. Uh, this thing is uh, just absolutely crazy. It earns a ton of silver. And I think it actually has a ridiculous earning capacity within this tank. I think you can actually earn 165% silver, which means you get an extra 65% silver within the game. So if you want to earn loads of silver, this one is kind of where you go uh, to make those crazy amounts of silver per game. Um, but then, you know, you are paying 12,500 gold for it. So, mm, yeah, kind of up to you. Um, in terms of uh, a couple of extra things, of course, I think, what else did we get? We got some, some pretty nifty things as well. Um, but yeah, I think the game is, is pretty interesting. I think the key things that I'm enjoying about World of Tanks updates right now is it kind of focused around actually trying to make the game better uh, rather than just pouring in tons and tons of just things that are like we'll just introduce monetization I really want to see some tank balance coming back into the game let's balance some of the old premiums <laughs> like the super purging that we've got on screen it's just not competitive whatsoever within the current meta most of the tier rates can go through the upper plate of this thing which you know completely makes the tank useless considering you can just be a normal purging uh, with the armor model being much well the same pretty much because you know you aren't going to bounce anything um, yeah I just think tanks like this need a buff. Uh, of course, you've got lots of premiums that are a little bit overpowered, but of course, Wargaming aren't going to nerf them because you get into the fact like someone pays money for something and then they change it and then, yeah, a bit of a problem with that. 
But yeah, definitely focusing on rebalancing some of the tanks to make them a little bit more competitive within the current game, of course. Um, with regards to a couple of other things, of course you have the standard daily challenges and of course keep uh, your eye on that. But one key thing that we did kind of find out within the game is that you can now actually see your weekly reward so you can have a look at how you're doing on the yearly progress and the yearly kind of and the w monthly progress to see how many points you've got what rewards you will earn and uh, if you want to actually just have a look at them you can go to your browser from the in-game menu or you can scan the QR code or just go to uh, console.worldoftanks.com to have a look at your rewards there of course you've got the key cards the statistics page and don't get me wrong you can now see the damage standing I believe uh, in the bottom right hand corner although it's broken because apparently I've got 9,505 percent damage standing oh my god um yeah apparently i've got for okay right so apparently the damage standing is completely broken um but yeah um interesting from wargaming there apparently i've got you know 10,000 damage standing on one tank and 9,000 um, would be very, very interested to see how they've managed to mess that one up. But yeah, interesting. Um, maybe it's different within the in-game menu, of course. We haven't actually played an in-game menu uh, as far as today's video. Um, but of course, if you go into a game and then come out, it will show you your damage standing within the, the log tab. So I haven't got any games to show you. Uh, but that, that's where it will be uh, for those of you wondering it will be in the statistics of course we've got the post battle results screen come back into the game as well um, we won't go into a game to, to kind of get that uh, but I guess if you're interested in seeing the post battle results screen that is a massive bonus and certainly for me being able to track my marks of excellence easy then yeah really really good for me and I, uh, a big thumbs up from me for this update of course there's plenty more update news coming out very very soon so stay tuned on the channel along with loads of gameplay and some uh, good ideas at least from what I think of some tanks that you might not have actually thought about on World of Tanks console that being tech tree and premium tanks and maybe just maybe we'll see a tech tree um, kind of showcase of one of the one of the American tech tree lines of course being the T124 and stuff like that I haven't purchased it yet I've got a lot of tier 10s that I haven't purchased actually uh, just because I don't have the silver maybe I'll do a little bit of a silver grind within the next couple of a uh, couple of weeks and try and uh, buy back some of the tanks within the American tech tree other than that, hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on the update. Do you think it was good? Have you seen a lot of changes that were actually beneficial? Or do you think some of them are just naff, some of them are worse? Uh, or would you like to see a revert still to update 6.0? Let me know in the comment section down below. Of course, a massive thank you to our channel members uh, for paying that little bit of extra to just help out the channel and purchase some of the extra tanks within the game and just help out the channel be okay but other than that i hope you guys have a massive uh, massively great day and of course i hope to see you in the next video thank you goodbye